Now, I know that there's a few people who really only have a GUI file manager installed to deal with the edge cases where you actually need one. Now, you might be wondering, well, when do you actually need a GUI file manager? So let's say you're working with something like Discord and you want to send an image on Discord to someone else. What you can do is open up the GUI file manager inside of Discord and then select the image. But the way that I typically get the image is I open up my file manager and I drag it in. And you can't really do that if you're using a terminal file manager because there's no way to drag it from the terminal into Discord. And there's a couple of other instances like that that pop up when you're mainly using web applications. And it can also be a problem if you're trying to drag an image into GIMP or just more generally dragging a file into an application that supports drag and drop. Now, as I said before, you don't necessarily need this because a lot of applications do have their own built-in GUI file managers, whether that is made for the application or if it's just something like the GTK file manager. But I'd much rather use my terminal file manager because I have things like shortcuts set up and it's just generally going to be a bit easier to use. So I thought, is there a way that I can go and eliminate my usage of a GUI file manager? And then I realized that a while back, I covered an application called Dragon, which basically adds a little GTK window, which will let you drag a file from that into another window or from a window into the GTK window. And combining this with a couple of scripts, I can pretty much take the functionality of a GUI file manager and just add it into a terminal file manager without really making it that much less convenient. Now, my terminal file manager of choice is LF, but nothing I'm doing today besides the configuration in LF is really gonna be bound to using this specific file manager. You could use something like Ranger or VIFM or NNN, or really you could even just do it directly in your terminal. As long as you can open up a graphical window, this will work perfectly fine. So let's just see how this would work. So if we just go over to my main screen and I open up LF. So let's say I wanted to do something like send an image into Discord. So this image right here. Now, do I have Discord open? Yes, I do. So let's put it over here. Now, by default, there's not really any way to do this. So I couldn't say drag this and then drop it over here. There's nothing I can really do here. Obviously, if I open up a GUI file manager, I could go and find an image and then just drop that in and that will work fine. But I don't really want this GUI file manager here. So let's get rid of this and let's see how Dragon will handle this instead. So if I press DR, which is what I've got this bound to, what it's gonna do is open up this little GTK window right here. So what if we try to drag from this window then? So if we drag this into Discord, now Discord is behaving the way we would expect it to. So let's just drop this in. And as you can see, we can actually send this image. Or let's say we wanted to send this image and this image right here. So we run this again opens up the little window here and we've got two images in here now. So let's just drag both of these over and we have the first image here and let's cancel this one and go to the second image. Now we have the second image here. Let's cancel this one and we decided not to send either of them. But as you saw, it's not just limited to sending one file. We can actually send multiple files at once. And it's not like this is just gonna work with Discord either. So let's try it with something like GIMP. So let's open up Dragon again and drop this image into GIMP. And as you can probably see, there is a little black border around the main section in GIMP here. Drop that in and that opened up the image perfectly fine. And we can try it with something like our web browser as well. So let's open up Dragon again. Now I was testing it off camera, so that's why it's already in there, but let's open this up, drop the image in here and that opened up perfectly fine. So Dragon is gonna work perfectly fine with anything that you can normally drop a file into. All Dragon is basically doing is I guess you could treat it like a very, very, very basic GUI file manager. And the applications that you're dragging to, they don't care about the source of the file. All they care about is that a file has been dropped onto their window. Now, as you might have noticed, Dragon was automatically closing as soon as we dragged it to one location. But let's instead say that you wanted to drag it to multiple locations. So what we can do instead is run DS. So what this is gonna do is make a window here with a file in it and this window isn't gonna close until we actively close it. So I could say drag this into my web browser. So drag this in here and we can drag it into this Discord chat. Let's say we wanted to drag it into a different Discord chat as well. So this one over here, drop it in here. And that basically will let you drag an image or drag any sort of file into multiple locations without having to go, okay, well, I want to open this one up here and drag it in here. Okay, I wanna open this one up again, drag it in here. Okay, I wanna go into this chat here. I wanna open up this and drag it in here. It's just a little bit more convenient if you wanna send it to multiple locations. 
But let's say you wanted to select multiple files, but all drag them to individual locations. So let's say we select this file here, we select this file here, and this file here. So if I do DI, what this is going to do is open up a little dragon window, and if we drag this image right here, instead of dragging all the images like we saw before, this time I only drag that individual image. And once again, this isn't going to close because if you're trying to drag multiple images to different locations, you wouldn't want it to automatically close after you've just dragged one thing. So we've dragged this first one, let's drag this second one into my web browser, and let's drag this third one into a different tab in my web browser. So as you can see, that's also working fine as well. So let's actually go and see how this is actually working. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of LF configuration here, but the main stuff I'm going to talk about is going to be about the script itself. So if I just go over to my LF config, go down to LF, LF, RC. Cool. So basically what we're doing is running just some basic options with Dragon. Now, the stuff I'm going to show you a bit later in the video, it's going to be a bit more than just some basic options. So keep watching for those ones. But... The first one we have is what I had bound to DR. So this is dragon dash drag and drop dash A dash X, and then basically passing in a list of files. So in LF, basically dollar FX means everything that you've currently got selected. So what the dash A option does is makes it so when you open up the dragon window with multiple files and you drag one of those files to another window, it's going to drag all the files at once. Now the dash X option, what that's going to do is make it so after you've just dragged one thing, it's automatically going to close the window. So the next one we have is drag and dash stay. And this is basically the same thing except without the dash X option. So this one, it's still going to automatically drag all of the files along with it when you drag one file, but it's not going to automatically close. And then drag and dash individual is basically just running drag and drop without any of the options. So this one is going to let you drag an individual file wherever you want to drag it to, and it won't automatically close it after dragging one file. And I also decided to map those commands to key bindings in LF. So for example, I've got dragon mapped to DR, I've got dragon stay mapped to DS, and I've got dragon individual mapped to DI. Now you can probably also see that I have a couple of other commands in here as well. So MV dragon, CP dragon, and DL file. Now DL file probably should have been called DL dragon just to stay in line with the theme that I've currently got set up, but it's called DL file now and I didn't really feel like changing it. So what about MV dragon and CP dragon then? So what these are basically going to let you do is move and copy a file between two LF windows by dragging the file. Now you can already do this in LF by just copying and pasting the file or moving and moving the file to a different location. But I thought, hey, if we're just going to be replicating GUI file manager behavior, why don't I replicate this behavior as well, even though it's not the most efficient way to do it? So if we open up two LF windows here, and let's just select an image in this one. So let's go into my image directory and select this image right here. So this is the one we were using earlier. And what we're going to do over in this second window here is we're going to select a folder that we're going to be dragging into. So let's just drag it into my home directory. And if we open up drag and move, what this is going to do is open up a blank dragon window. So I can drop anything in here. And what it's going to try to do is move that file into this location. So I could drag it from a GUI file manager and drag it in here, or I could drag it from a different dragon window. So we're just going to do it from a different dragon window right now and drop this in here. And now it's actually gone and updated on this side. Sometimes it actually doesn't do that. Sometimes you have to go and refresh it. But if we go over here now and we go down to 7701, as you can see, the file is actually located in here. So let's open this file up and see if it worked. As you can see, it's moved the file over perfectly fine. So let's say this time what we're going to do is copy the file from my home directory and paste it into my pictures directory. So if we open up Dragon from this one, so DR, now we've got this little window here. And let's open up the CP Dragon window on the left side this time. So DC, and we've got this blank window here. And if we just drop this in right now, as you're going to see, the file is still in here. So if we refresh, it's still in here. And now there's also a copy in this directory as well. Now, as I said, you don't actually need to do this in LF because you can already copy between these two windows. So let's say we want to copy that image and then paste it over into my pictures directory. So I've copied it over here and then I just paste it and that works fine. So in LF, you don't have to do this. In some other terminal file managers, it might not work as nicely, but LF is set up in a really nice way where you can actually copy between two different windows. Okay, so let's go have a look at how these two scripts are working behind the scenes then. So if we go into my scripts directory, 
into the dragon folder. As you can see, I've got three scripts in here. We'll look at the CP dragon script first though. So basically what I'm doing on this first line here is I'm getting all of the files. So if we do dragon dash drag and drop the dash T and the dash X option, what the dash X option is gonna do is basically make it so it's gonna automatically close as soon as we drag a file into it or we drag a file out of it. Now the dash T option, the way that's gonna work is instead of this drag and drop window being a source, it's going to be a target instead. So a source is when it contains files, a target is when it's gonna receive files. And then pretty much all I'm doing is I'm looping over those files and then just making sure the path is in a format that I can actually copy it. And then I'm just copying it into wherever I wanna copy it to. And the way MV Dragon works is pretty much the same way, but instead of doing a copy, it's doing a move instead. That's literally the only difference between those two scripts. So I could probably simplify this by making the rest of the boilerplate code here a separate file, and then either calling CP or MV for which one I need to use. Now, as for DL file, this is something that you don't normally see available in a GUI file manager. So let's say in my web browser over here, I have a picture of a duck. And let's say I wanted to download this file. So normally what you'd have to do is go save image as and then basically select the location you want to save it to. But instead of doing that, wouldn't it be nice if we could just get this image and then just drag it over here and download it? But that's not something you can normally do. But with Dragon, we can do that. So let's open up LF and see how that's going to work. Let's just say we want to download the file into my home directory here. Let's just zoom in a bit so we can see what's going to happen. So if I just run DL, that opens up a little dragon target. So let's just drag this file into that. And as you can see, it's highlighting it and we'll drop that in. Now it's gonna prompt us for a file name. So let's just call this duck.png and give it a second to go. And that seems like it's worked. So if we go down to duck.png, it's downloaded the image. And there we go. We have the image actually saved on my computer. So let's go over and see how this one works. Now it's not too complex, but it is a little bit more complex than what we saw before. Now the first line is the exact same thing we saw earlier where we are basically setting up the drag and drag and drop window as a target that closes after one thing has been dragged into it. Because what happens when you drag a URL into drag and drag and drop is it's just gonna output the URL of the thing you passed in. When you drag a file into it, it's gonna say this is a file and then tell you the path to the file. So that's how you can distinguish between the two of them. Now I haven't actually done any processing to make sure it's not gonna try to download something on my file system. I probably should do that. But as long as you use it properly, it's not exactly a problem. And if you do use it improperly, it's just gonna break. It's not actually gonna try to download anything. It'll just say that curl can't download this. So the rest of this block here is a really complex way of basically setting up a file name, checking if the file already exists and overriding the file, and then prompting you for a new file if the file name does exist. Now, there's probably a much, much easier way to do this, but I wrote this script a while ago and I didn't actually bother to fix it. But basically that's what that section there is doing. Now, the important part of this section is this line right here. So curl-o, and then the URL for what you're trying to download. So curl-o will basically let you set the name of something you're trying to download, and then the URL should make sense, it's the URL. So what this is gonna let you do is download something using curl. And you might've noticed that as we were using the application, it was showing some information down here. So let's just try that again. So DL file, and we drag this one in here. Let's give it a name. So we we'll just call it t.jpg and just watch what's happening down the bottom here. So that's basically the output of curl. And if we go down to t.jpg now, it's gone and downloaded that image just fine. So you could use something besides curl if you wanted to, but I kind of like curl and I know how to use it. So that's what I decided to use. All of these scripts and my LF configuration files are available on my GitHub down below. So if you want to try them out for yourself or you want to modify them, then go download them from down there. Now, I think I've covered the basic use cases of a GUI file manager. Obviously, there might be other things you could probably think of. And I guarantee there are other useful things you could use Dragon for. So for example, let's say you want to have a target that when you drag a zip file or a tar file into it, it's going to unarchive it. Now, I don't think that that's that useful, so I didn't cover it in this video, but maybe that's something you want to do, or maybe there's some other use case for Dragon that I didn't think of that is something that's actually really, really useful that I probably should have covered in this video. If there's something like that, feel free to let me know down below, or if you haven't tried out Dragon for yourself, feel free to let me know what you're going to be using it for. Now, obviously, this isn't a perfect replacement for a GUI file manager. It is slightly less convenient, but if you find yourself most of the time using a terminal file manager, and it's only very rare that you actually need to open up a GUI one, 
maybe it makes sense to try this out. I don't know, it's kind of going to be up to what you want to do, but I would say that if you rarely ever use a GUI file manager, it might make sense to try this just so you can still work with things like Discord or YouTube uploading or various other website uploading without having to open up a GUI file selector. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about today. But before I go, I wanted to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Peter Lee, Tony Donald and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear in this channel, or anything else you want and not a small kickback for. Also, go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute, and remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.